Last week, we spoke about the command we have been given to accept all the promises God has given us. We spoke of the amazing faith of Mary, Naaman, and the widow of Sidon. All these people heard about the blessing God was willing to give them and accepted what was said by faith. These people did not only accept what was told them, but backed up their faith with actions. The widow of Sidon gave her last meal to a stranger because she believed in the promises of God. Naaman washed himself in the river seven times, believing the word of Elisha. When we read the Bible, we must accept what is said and live our lives according to our faith. Today, we are going to continue to focus on God's amazing grace and love. Today, we are going to further understand God's mercy. When Jesus came to earth to live among us as a human, he showed how great God's love is for us. God loved us so much that he was willing to identify with us and live like us to completely understand our suffering and pain. Years ago, we took a group of Americans up into the furthest corner of Nepal in a village called Nepka that was in the district of Humla. This village is so remote that for a long time, nobody even knew of its existence. We flew in by helicopter to the village of Dharma and then walked two days to Nepka to do a solar panel project. The people of Nepka have a very hard life. They have no electricity, no running water, and must work very hard to make a living so high up in the Himalayas. The villagers sleep on the floor around an open fire and therefore they are often covered in soot and rarely have the time to wash themselves or their clothes. When we first arrived in the village, the American guests had a hard time understanding why the people look so filthy, especially since they lived by a fast-flowing mountain stream. In a way, our tourist friends looked down on the people. Some of the guests decided to be a good example to the people by going down to the mountain stream to bathe every day. These guests soon found out one reason why the village people did not wash in the stream. They all spent the night shivering with high fevers and chills. After spending five days working in the homes of Nepka, our foreign team slowly started to look more and more like the local people. Doing solar panel projects was one of my favorite humanitarian aid projects. When you hook up solar panels to a home, you can enter into the cave-like houses of the people and experience a little of what their life is like. When the food is cooking in the one-room house, the smoke fills the room and it is hard to breathe. There are very few windows in these homes because of the cold and there is almost no furniture. While installing the solar lights, the villagers would often offer you anything they might have, apples, potatoes, or tea. The best part of this work is turning the switch on in the home for the first time and seeing the faces light up with a smile. During these projects, we would also install chimneys into the homes to keep the smoke out. Taking part in these projects was a life-changing experience for many people because we got to spend a short amount of time in the homes of the people. Most tourists that go to Nepal will spend their time in tourist areas and sleep in hotels that are catered to them. Many do not realize the hardship of the life of the villagers. God cared enough about us that he was willing to leave the comfort of heaven to come and live among us. God wanted to understand our life, relate to us and help us. There is a well-known idiom that says, before you judge a man, walk a mile in his shoes. You cannot understand someone's life unless you live it yourself for a while. It is also true that you cannot help anyone unless you understand them. Some non-governmental agencies wasted a lot of money on projects in Nepal that were never useful to the people because they did not take the time to understand the people they were serving. In one village, an NGO built new toilets for an entire village. These toilets had nice concrete outhouses and septic tanks. 
A few months after the toilets were built, I was walking through a village and noticed that there was just as much excrement on the path as there used to be. I stopped to drink tea and talk to the people about what I noticed. Most of the local people did not like using a closed-in bathroom. They felt it was dirty and could not get used to it. Besides, these people had found a better use for the septic tank and outhouse. The local people filled the outhouse with firewood and tools and used the septic tank as storage for their rice and beans. The NGO had failed to understand the needs of the people, and they also failed to explain to the people the reason why they truly needed to use bathrooms. God did not make these mistakes. God cared enough to come to earth and understand the pain and suffering of humans. It is incredible to think about how Jesus left his power behind to be born a helpless baby. Listen to the following verse. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 1 to 2. Every high priest is selected from among the people and is appointed to represent the people in matters related to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and are going astray, since he himself is subject to weakness. The writer of the book of Hebrews explains that the high priest was to be selected from among the people so that he could represent them well and be gentle towards them. The reason the high priest could be gentle towards the sinful people is that he himself was sinful. How can a rich person understand the life of a poor person? The American tourists could not understand the Nepali people unless they first lived among them for a while. For Jesus to become our advocate, our high priest, and our savior, he had to become human. How can an all-powerful God understand a weak and sinful human being? The only way God could do this was to become human. Because Jesus lived on earth for over 30 years, he can deal gently and graciously with us. Nurses who have gone through treatments for serious illnesses will be kinder and more gentle towards their patients than those who have never experienced the pain. Listen to the following verse, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 5 to 9. It is not to the angels that he has subjected the world to come about which we are speaking, but there is a place where someone has testified, What is mankind that you are mindful of them, a son of man that you care for him? You made them a little lower than the angels, you crowned them with glory and honor, and put everything under their feet. And putting everything under them, God left nothing that is not subject to them. Yet at present, we do not see everything subject to them. But we do see Jesus, who was made lower than the angels for a little while, now crowned with glory and honor, because he suffered death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. These verses speak of the wonder of the salvation we have been given. God chose to subject the world to the reign of humans. Amazingly, God would give such importance to us. Why would God care and decide to crown us with glory and honor? Humans are not yet crowned and honored, but they one day will be under the rule of Christ. Jesus is the first fruit of those who will be resurrected to new life. Before he could represent us, Jesus had to become human and suffer death on the cross. Jesus promises us, that we will also rule with him in the new heaven and the new earth. One of the greatest mysteries in the Bible is the fact that Jesus was 100% human and 100% God at the same time. Jesus did not cease to be God when he came to earth, but he did somehow lay aside his deity. Listen to the following verses. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 to 11. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used for his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, 
and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Paul reminds the Philippians that we are to take Jesus as our example. We are to deal with one another gently and not try to lord it over others. Paul explains that although Jesus was God, he emptied himself of his godly nature, or at least laid it aside, making himself nothing, and he became a servant to us all. One major way we see that Jesus somehow lay aside his deity is that he submitted to death, he was able to die. For Jesus to become our example, he had to become human. How can humans take God as an example? Could an ant take a human as an example and live like one? When Jesus was on earth, he did not use his own powers as God, but instead trusted in God the Father for any power he needed. Jesus lived his life dependent on God so that we can take his example and do likewise. Jesus says this in several places. John chapter 5 verse 30 By myself I can do nothing. I judge only as I hear, and my judgment is just. For I seek not to please myself, but him who sent me. John chapter 12 verse 49 and 50 For I did not speak on my own, but the Father who sent me commanded me to say all that I have spoken. I know that his command leads to eternal life. So whatever I say is just what the Father has told me to say. Jesus did not minister using his own knowledge and power as God, but instead lived life using the knowledge and the power that God gave to him. Jesus spoke the words that God gave to him, and he judged only according to the knowledge that God provided for him. In this way, Jesus was able to become our example. Jesus tells us that we can do nothing on our own and that we should completely rely on him as the source of our power. John chapter 15 verse 5 to 8 I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my word remains in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. Jesus says that we cannot bear fruit without him. We can do nothing without God. It is only by remaining in Christ that we can bear fruit for God. In the same way that Jesus only bore fruit by remaining in God, we are to bear fruit by remaining in him. If Jesus had used his own power as God on earth, he could not have died for us. He could not have become our high priest, and he would not have been a hundred percent human. When Jesus was tempted in the desert by Satan, part of the temptation of Satan was to entice Jesus to use his own powers to provide for himself instead of trusting God. Satan tried to get Jesus to turn rocks into bread by his own strength, but Jesus refused to do so. There are so many aspects of Jesus' incarnation that need to be considered. Jesus was willing to be born into a sinful world and put up with the wickedness of humans. How could a righteous God put up with the filth of sin, and yet Jesus showed great compassion towards sinners, to the point where he was called a friend of sinners? How could Jesus put up with sinners? He was gentle towards us, because he also suffered under temptation. Jesus suffered under sinful men in the same way that many of us have suffered. Jesus was attacked, spat upon, accused, ridiculed, and beaten. Jesus had to pay taxes and live under an oppressive government. 
Jesus experienced everything that we have experienced, and yet he never sinned. Listen to the following verse. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14 to 16. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Jesus became our high priest, and he is now in heaven speaking up for us. Jesus can speak on our behalf because he can empathize with our weaknesses. Jesus himself was tempted in every way, just as we have been, and yet he did not sin. A perfect being cannot be tempted, but only a weak one. Because Jesus was 100% human, he was weak, and yet not weak enough to allow the temptation to lead him into sin. God cannot be tempted into doing evil. God is perfect and righteous, and therefore he cannot even contemplate doing evil. Jesus had a body and lived in a fallen world. Jesus was tempted by his body to do things he did not want to do. This means that Jesus' body desired things that were not right, and Jesus had to fight the temptation like any other human being in the world. Why did Jesus need to be born of Mary? Jesus had to be born of water, just like anyone else. He had to have a human side. All these things are too wonderful to comprehend. The main point we must get out of all of this is that Jesus can empathize with us because he understands our weakness. Listen to the following verse that can help us understand a little more. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7 to 10. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, and was designated by God to be high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Jesus lived his life in reverent submission to God, but it was not easy for him to do this as a human being. Jesus had to cry out for help to keep himself pure. Jesus kept himself pure by constant prayers and petitions that he made to God with fervent cries and tears. Who was the one that could save Jesus from death? It was God the Father. The death that this passage is talking about is spiritual death. Or falling into sin. Jesus is our example. He lived a righteous life trusting in God for help. We also must live our lives trusting Jesus for help. If Jesus had to cry out for help in prayer, how much more should we do this? Since Jesus is our high priest, we can confidently approach the throne room of grace. Remember what is written. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 to 16. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. We can be sure to find mercy and grace from God. We can also be sure to find help in our time of need. Because we have an advocate speaking for us, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Listen to what is said a little further. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 23 to 26. Now there have been many of those priests since death prevented them from continuing in office. But because Jesus lives forever, he has a permanent priesthood. Therefore he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. Such a high priest truly meets our needs, one who is holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, exalted above the heavens. 
We can be confident to receive salvation because Jesus lives to intercede for those of us who choose to come to God. Once more, we see that we have a part to play in salvation. We must believe and we must approach. When we do believe, we can be confident that Jesus can save us and Jesus will meet all our needs. Jesus can make us holy, blameless, and pure, and he can set us apart from sin. We must learn to have confidence in the salvation given to us by Jesus Christ. We must learn to live in joy and thankfulness. Let us finish off today by reading another passage full of promises for us. Romans chapter 8, verse 31 to 39. What then shall we say in response to all of these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charges against those who God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardships, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or swords? As it is written, For your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, not anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Do you realize that God is for you? Do you understand how much God gave to you when he sent Jesus on earth to die on the cross? If you accept these things and give your life to Christ, nobody can stand against you. Nobody can bring charges against you or condemn you. Jesus lives to intercede for those who accept Him. We are conquerors in Jesus Christ. If you are struggling with sin, please understand that nothing can separate you from His love. There is nothing you can do that God is not willing to forgive except for turning your back on Him. God understands our sinful state. God is willing to forgive, and God is willing to help. Be like Jesus. Cry out to God for help and be confident that He is both willing and able to help you. May God bless you and your family.